In the Kursk region, Russian commanders defended themselves with dragon's teeth because of fears of a breakthrough of the AFU on the highway. However, such offense only complicated the movement of Russians, in particular the evacuation of the wounded and the flight from Ukrainian FPV drones. Russian Z blogger Sviatoslav Golikov wrote about this on Telegram to the philologist Ambush Channel, Focus, reports. According to him, such barriers are installed Velikosoldatsky district in the Sudsa Kursk Highway, a dangerous area where enemy drones have already burned more than 50 vehicles, military and civilian. People are trying to slip through this section at high speeds. The other day, the dragon's teeth were secretly installed on the site. No alerts or warning signs. At speeds of 150 kilometers an hour, several cars flew in. There were dead and heavy casualties. Comrades working in the Sujan direction tore down these teeth to hell. But the next day, the situation repeated itself. Again, unexpected teeth, broken cars, several dead and several people in intensive care. The blogger was indignant. He said that such actions are similar not to the work of the leadership, but to Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance groups. You can't put a post on a site. It is stupidly smashed by drones. Alerts and warning signs could save you situationally, but now the dragon's teeth on the highway are not an option. The highway is actively working, and at the same time people are forced to fly along it. The blogger wrote, he was outraged that the losses from such barriers in this area are greater than from FPV drones. He also added that the other day a well-known volunteer crashed into the teeth there on his car. He was not injured, but he lost his car. In another Russian telegram channel, Troika, it was reported that 40 Russian soldiers had already died because of the dragon's teeth. At night in the Kursk region, an unknown SRG exposes the dragon's teeth in the rear on the evacuation routes along which cars rush from FPV drones at 150 km an hour without any identification marks. More than 40 people died in just one day, the same number of people are injured. There are more accidents in an hour than FPV knocks out in a week. Russia is facing problems in integrating foreign mercenaries from Africa into its army. According to Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko, reports show increasing difficulties and extremely low efficiency of Africans during combat operations. Judging by the reports from the places where the reinforcements are staying, the Russian army is in a really bad way with Africans. They don't want to fight. They don't want to work. Give us vodka, women and jumbo jumbo, he writes. Among the main problems, the experts note low level of knowledge of the Russian language, unwillingness to study the language in more depth and understand orders, lack of understanding the differences in ranks and seniority in the unit, unwillingness to carry out tasks as part of assault groups, extremely dissolute and relaxed behavior within units, low level of learning ability and efficiency, the performance of physical work on setting up positions is of poor quality. Kovalenko points out that these factors significantly complicate the effective use of foreign volunteers in the combat operations. The expert also expresses the opinion that the involvement of foreigners may be a sign of a shortage of human resources in the Russian armed forces. The Yakuts are finished. The Africans have failed. What's next? Will the Pyongyang people save the bald moth? What a disgrace. In the USSR era, all this rabble was pulled by 15 republics, and now the secular rabble is pulled by Putin's obscurantism. Russians, you are really at a dead end, the expert emphasizes. Recall several thousand Africans have been integrated into Russian battalions since the invasion of Ukraine. At present, Moscow is a potent player in Africa. Western awe for Russian operations reached its sad climax in the period from 2021 to 2023 as Moscow played a series of highly effective diplomatic and disinformation campaigns. Although not the primary cause, they certainly had a role in the ousting of the presidents of first Mali, then Burkina Faso, and finally Niger, the rise of three Moscow-friendly putschists regimes, and the upending of a failing decade-old French-led counter-terror campaign in the region. Moscow returned to the stage with a bang. The Kremlin perfectly read and then perfectly exploited the anger among the rank and file in the Sahelian armies who felt they were being humiliated and fed into the meat grinder while Europeans sat pretty in armored vehicles, their elites dining out on development aid. One person was killed and at least three others were injured in what the Israeli police described as a nationalistically motivated attack on Tuesday. 
the shooting occurred on a two-lane highway in the city of Jabna. Speaking to Israeli media, ACIA Haroni, a police spokesman, described the incident as a terror attack. One man injured in the attack died as he was brought to Asyuta Hospital, spokesperson for the hospital, Ohad Yehezkali, said. Israeli police say one officer was killed and four civilians were wounded in a shooting Tuesday on a highway in central Israel. Police did not immediately provide the identity of the shooter, but police spokeswoman, Mirat Ben Mayer, said that it was a militant attack. Police said the attacker approached the highway and shot the officer before firing on civilians, wounding four. The attacker was then shot by a paramedic arriving on the scene, Israel's rescue services said, without saying whether the attacker was killed. The shooting occurred on a two-lane highway near the city of Jabna, just south of Tel Aviv. Ohad Yehezkali, a spokesperson for nearby Asyuta Hospital, said the officer died on the way there and another civilian was being treated for moderate injuries. He said two more wounded people were being transported to the hospital. Palestinians have carried out dozens of stabbing, shooting and car ramming attacks against Israelis since Hamas October 7 attack triggered the war in Gaza.